together to live in this house again. I would be asking you some questions. I'm not interested. Why are you here? Daddy impregnated a black American woman. Jesus Christ. Oh. I think you and Daddy raised you up without any help from your father. Everyone has begged you. No way. Please. Get out. Please. I said, get out. Please, please. Oh my shoes. Get out. I won't be part of this evil called unforgiveness. Richard, you need to put yourself in your mother's shoes. Putting her drink. You know who? No, no, it's prof again. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Ah, come on. Ah, 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 doctor. Jesus. Jesus. Ah. Jesus. Ah. I made up my mind 25 years ago, and there is no way back. That is for me. is fine. You want me to tell your daughter you are fine when you are sick? Mr. Tunde Billows, your session is over. You either get out of here or you wait for me to call security. When are you going to get set? Are you set to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I am set to now. No, 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 no. You are not set to. I, if it is done, I know you are really, really done. So I've prayed to God several times to make my home like you. <coughs> You have carved this room out for yourself alone. My dear, you're a pastor. Go read your Bible and learn how to control yourself. What brings you here? I had a dream. You mean you came all the way from Nigeria just to come tell me about a dream? Mommy, we are fine. We don't need you here with us right now. Tunde. Mommy. Is she right? This is America. Things are not as drastic as they are back home. In your church that you attend back home, is fire burn this, fire consume that. If fire burn everything, what will remain? Mom, I am tired of you trying to run my life. I am a grown woman here. Your husband is miserable and here you are, walking up and down. Carry one useless briefcase and see if it will guarantee you access to heaven. I'm buying you your ticket and you're going back to Nigeria this night. You are casting me out of your house? One more word, I swear I will divorce you. Hear me! When God called you into this ministry, you specifically told me that the Lord has called you to be a church planter and also to build his people and not build it. How can you be saying that about me? No, no. You I mean, I mean, I mean, how, how, how can building normal structures for the church make me lose focus? My major problem in this church is that the brethren don't give. They are not givers. I see. I can tell from the look of your office. You sure need some financial uplift. When I was coming to this church, the Spirit of God told me that you are not givers. So I am going to call you out if you have $7,000. Despite the fact that I have a large congregation, this is five thousand dollars. Yes, you are right. But I told you I needed money. Can you just add it up to seven point five k? Don't worry. Um, I will organize another program. In that case, another program cost you five thousand dollars. This car just the talking for this. I am very much disappointed in you. I introduced you as a friend. What what do I get in return? You were the one who introduced him to the business. Alright. You were the one who introduced him to this church. Very good. But 
It's simply not his fault. I'm suspecting you and um, Sister Mary with that tiny, rusty-looking sister in the choir. <laughs> what do you mean? He suddenly made her a choir leader out of nowhere. After she gave her life a year ago. What's wrong with that? Eric, Eric. I mean Pastor Eric. You and I know what happened between the two of us before you made me a deepness. I hope picking her up will not stop my monthly allowance. Your allowance? <laughs> don't worry. You don't know where I get the money from. Besides, it's not mine, it's not yours. It's the church money. We'll spend it. Don't worry. But people out there are calling our names. They are making fun of us. They've given us a nickname. They call us 2525. What is that supposed to mean? They said in 25 years of ministry, our membership strength is still 25. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Be warned because the race is going to an end. Don't even beg me. Please, ah, please. 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 Ah, please. Dear, I won't do it again. Who is your dear? I am not your dear. You better go and meet your lovers out there. I am not your dear. <laughs> please. No. One more chance. One more chance. I will never do it again. I won't go back to my vomit. Please. Good. You know you are a dog ah. that keeps going back to her vomit. Ah. Unfortunately for you, no more chance. No more chance this time around. <laughs> I have handed over to your tormentors. <laughs> who? Who, who, are, who are those? Those foolish men, of course. Ah. Those foolish men you freely eat yourself to. They are your tormentors. <laughs> but I don't love them. It's you that I love. Please, please. Who are you fooling? Please, please. Oh, you claim you love me. Yes. But you are sleeping around with those men you ate. I won't Can you hear yourself talk? When you are ready, you will go and pack your things ah. and get out of my life. <laughs> get out of my house. Please, please. What am I even waiting for? Please. You are leaving now. Ah, get up. Wait, get up. Please, don't up. Do up. Please, get please, out. Please, get please, out please, of my house. Please, get out of my life. Please, get out of my life. Please, get out. Please, 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 Always good and never sins. <clears throat> Absolutely, you are right. There is no righteous man on earth. 
no man who is right and never sins. But who are you, old man? I'm surprised at that question that you asked. You know me, don't you? Is it not here that you come every day whenever you want to speak to me and I appear to you daily? Why don't you seem to know me again? Actually, I shouldn't have come out today, but your last word brought me out when you admit that there is no good man on earth who does what is right and never sins. Well, I have come here today not to praise you, but to report my life to you. Though I have come here not to seek for your advice, because I've already made up my mind what I'm going to do. Is this still about your wife? Yes, of course. That good for nothing woman. Point of correction. Everything creator is good. She might not be good for you, but definitely she is good for something else. Exactly. She is good for other men, but not for me. Last year I came to report her, but you convinced me. Last month she did the same thing again. And she has done the same thing all over again. I can't take it. No, I cannot take it again. I can't take it again. What did she do now? Is it different from what she has been doing? Good. This year, I found her with another man. This will make it six men that I found with my, with my woman. And I cannot longer take it again. So... What is your decision? Sir, what do you have to say? Can you take that if that happens to your son? I said, what is your decision? D divorce, of course. I will divorce my wife. I'm going to divorce her for unfaithfulness. I will divorce her for not keeping up to her marital vows. Hmm. Hmm. Are you faithful yourself? and not promiscuous to your marital vow? Me? What do you mean, sir? Are you not the one who said it earlier? That there is no man on earth who is faithful, righteous, and never sins. I've not seen her for some days now. Has she changed her way of life? Unfortunately not. She hasn't changed at all. In fact, her situation has even worsened. Tell me more, please. Her lifestyle, profanity, uncleanliness, sexual immorality, idolatry, witchcraft, lust, self-ambition, hatred, drunkenness, partying, and, and, and mention, just mention them. Victoria, but you know such works of the flesh cannot be condoled in this palace. So why are you still allowing her to stay in the palace? My father, ever since she started this her lifestyle, she made up her mind to leave the palace. You mean Victoria is no longer in the palace? Yes, 
she's no longer in the palace. But she goes on and off because she feels she's no longer experiencing love, joy, goodness, long suffering, patience, gentleness. She has succumbed herself to the desires of the flesh and the lust thereof. So you have lost your bride? You have divorced her? No, my father. I have moved in with her because I still love her. So, you know, I've called her and she will come. Make sure you are bold enough to tell her. Long live my king. You pressed the bell and sent for me, so here I am. Yes, I pressed the bell. Victoria. My king. <laughs> so what your husband, your bridegroom, has said is true. So your garment is stained. It's no longer pure white anymore. And besides, I heard that you have moved out of the palace. I Victoria, with all the price that your husband, Brago, paid, I can see the manifestations of the works of the flesh. You are bought with a price, mm -hmm. and you are to glorify him in your beauty. You are bought with a price. Do not become slaves of men. I have packed my things from this palace. I am ready to move out. It is him who is not allowing me to leave. If you can ask him to grant me my wishes. After all, I'm, I'm just, just let me be. Tell him to let me be. He's, he's not willing to give me a divorce and I don't know what he says it means. Something that is probably to his own advantage. <laughs> who do you think you are? You think you are that important? The fact that I allowed you to come into my presence is the grace that you are enjoying just because of my son. If not for him, you know I cannot be whole iniquities. He's the one that granted you permission that you can still walk into my presence like this. You are just allowing different men to sleep with you. By the way, I heard that you have seven men now sleeping with you. Is that true? Point of correction, my king. There are only six because he's no longer part of them. I just see no reason why he would not just free me and let me go. He's just holding on to me. Let me go. Victoria, but why are you rejoicing in your adulterous way of life? Your husband is waiting patiently for when you will allow your senses to come back. But you know that the wages of sin is dead. You know that the wages of sin is dead. For everyone that sins will come short of my glory. Have your seat. Thank you, sir. So, why did you come to the palace today? To greet me, or to praise me, or even to lodge complaints as usual? My king, I promise that I will come back another day to greet. But for today, I am here to complain. In fact, I have something to show you. Please, sir, read this. This is my evidence this time. Prince, please read this one loud. Read it loud. Mm -hmm. 
Baby, I just want to thank you for spending the whole night with me last month. I really enjoyed your stay. I also look forward for the next available time. It is now very obvious that we are meant for each other. How I wish to be having you all the time, if not for that your unwise man calling himself husband. Baby, there... You know what? That's enough. That's enough. That is the message that good for nothing man sent to my wife. You can hear him calling her his babe and me an unwise man. Last month, she told me she was traveling with her church brethren, only for me to find out that she has camped with him all this time. Hmm. Do you know this man? Yes, my king. I know him. This is the same man. That is the foolish man that almost put her life before I met her. The man is a known froster. A, a deceiver, a dishonest man. In fact, he goes all around seeking for women that he can exploit and devour. That's what he does. She knows him. She knows him. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I know you very well. You always come to my presence every year to report your wife. But this time around, that man, what did he do to your wife? He has done several things to her. In fact, he made her a butt for him several times. Just like he has made other women a butt for him as well. Last time you said your wife told you she was traveling with church members. But I know you attend the same church. Why did you travel with her? Are you not a member of the church? By the way, leave that one alone. So, a young man, let me ask you a question. How many men does she go out with you? It is that same old man. That same old man that almost quit her life. That is the man she keep going to. She has refused or find it difficult to live in. And how many days did she spend with him? Can you believe that my wife goes to this man one full month every year. Meaning she spent 11 months with you? Exactly. <laughs> Very interesting. Now, let me ask you a question. What if your wife decides to reduce one month to one week or even one day? Would that be okay with you? I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand that your question. Are you expecting me to allow my wife to s sleep with other men? Even for one minute, I will not share my wife. I want her for just myself. That is why I married her. Is that what you want? What I want, sir, is your approval to divorce her. Oh. I just need your approval to divorce her. Okay. The only reason I'm here, sir, it's because there is a city ordinance that said we must seek your approval first before we divorce our wife. That is why I'm here. Is that what you want? I just need your approval. Okay. That's... Now, woman. Yes, my lord. Will you be ready to let go all these men and stick to only your husband? Please, my lord. I've already begged him. I promise I will not do it again. Please help me beg him. It will never happen again. No way. No way. Please, no way. Beg. That's how she does. She begs. I forgive her so many times. But she keeps going back to the same man. So this time, it is fine. I have made up my mind. All I want is divorce. Huh. I want to let her go. You can go and meet the man. Yes, you can go and meet the man. That's it. Yes. So what exactly do you want me to do? Your approval, sir. Give me the approval to divorce her. sent for you. First and foremost, 
I know you will be wondering why I did not allow you to go home yesterday. That was an act of my mercy. Because if I allowed you to go home yesterday, you, you, you would have killed your wife overnight. Yes. You are surprised how I know. Is there anything hidden from me? Absolutely no. Besides, you are not supposed to even move closer to my throne, to my kingdom, because of your sin. Talk less of you sleeping overnight in my house. But because of my begotten son, Prince, he permitted you and blotted away and covered your dirtiness. And again, that was an act of grace. Because my prince has carried upon himself all your dirtiness for the kind of love he has for you. Now, I want the two of you to listen to his testimony. This is the proper time. Hear his testimony. I do not want you to be surprised that I heard every single thing that you discussed with my father last night in private. Because my father and I are one. Okay. So. Long live my king. You sent for me again. Eh? Is there anything the matter? What is it again now? What, what is it? Your husband sent for you, not me. I was the one that sent for you. Please take your seat. Now, back to you. You said you want to divorce your wife just because your wife stayed with a stranger for one month in one calendar year. Yet she's begging and pleading that you shouldn't divorce her. But you insist because she's been doing this for many years. Here is my wife. Point of correction. I have told you, Prince. I am but no longer your wife. What part of that don't you understand? Is it by force? I've told you, let me go. Free me. Give me a divorce. It's, it's only the king. It's because of the king that is not really granting my wishes. And just let me be. Grant that wish and let, me, let you leave me alone. Let me tell you something. Eh? Hear me and very, hear me very well. By the time I'm done with you, I will so frustrate you. You will never, you will never forget. When I'm done with you, you have to let me go. But just leave me. Okay, I'm sorry. Here is my so-called wife. She left the palace, left my own inherited kingdom and started staying in a very small apartment. Yet, I did not divorce her, even when she requested for a divorce. Your own wife stayed with a stranger for one month in one year. But my wife only allows me to stay with her for one month. And she stays with many strangers the remaining 11 months. Your wife is begging and pleading for forgiveness. But my so-called wife is proud of her actions. Many times she was infected with several incurable sexually transmitted diseases. And she went to several hospitals, but she never knew that I was aware of all of this. And because of her wickedness, she would open the door of her room for me to commune with her in order to infect me with such diseases she has contacted from strangers, yet are born her infirmities. Yet, I translated her out of darkness into the marvelous light. And by my wounds, 
she is healed. Unfortunately, whenever she is healed, she seizes that opportunity to go out to those strangers. And then whenever she wants to transfer those diseases back to me, she comes back to me to commune with me. But I still heal her. I redeemed her from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for her. Oh my God, my prince. So you have been the one carrying me from all these diseases and infirmities. Oh my God, King. What have I done? Victoria, who else do you think could have done it? Or who else do you think has the power to heal you? You know the doctors have given you a few months to live, but now you are still alive. Hmm. It is because of your bridegroom. If not for him, you will have died by now. Victoria, <laughs> if only you know the kind of husband that you have, your bridegroom, you will not have been messing up with him. Your prince, your bridegroom, your husband has the same blood with me. And whenever he communes with you, he kills you from all your diseases and illnesses. But you do not know. Now, let me ask you a question. Who do you think that always kill all your yearly infections? My king, it was all those men outside. It was those men that were deceiving me. <laughs> they told me that if I meet with them, I'll go and meet with him. I'll be healed. <laughs> it's their fault. <laughs> they are all liars. <sighs> and they all have the same father, who is the father of all lies. He has been a liar right from the beginning. But, but answer this question. How can you give yourself to a man to control your life even when you don't know his father? And you know deep within you that our father is a father of light in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. <laughs> your act is what I call an act of wickedness. When you know that you still have some diseases, why did you always send for your bridegroom to come and sleep with you when you know that you have disease, uncurable diseases, so that it can contact disease from you? That is wickedness. Ah, my king, I hated the prince for no absolute reason. I disgusted him for no reason, no reason, and no wonder, come to think of it. Every time I meet with him, I expect him to be weaker, but yet he's stronger, and I'm the weaker one. <laughs> Victoria. Yes, my king. Let me tell you, why you are still a sinner, your husband, my prince, your bridegroom died for you. He loves you so much. <sighs> he was wounded for your transgression. Yes, oh. He was crushed from your iniquities. Yes. <laughs> and he carried upon himself chastisements that brought you peace. By his stripes, you are healed. He loves you so much. Thank you, son. Now, you have heard clearly what my wife did to me. Do you still want to divorce your wife? No, 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 no. Father, please approve this divorce. Please approve their divorce. No, 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 no. I don't want to divorce anyone. No, no. no. You see how painful it is? It feels, it feels.
That story illustrates way of life about your relationship with your maker, the prince. How many faithful husbands will see his precious wife with a stranger, with another man in the very heart, and still desire to marry her or take her back? Unfortunately, that is the same way we treat the prince, the prince of peace, our bridegroom. As this is publicly and morally unacceptable, so also it is unacceptable to the prince, the great bridegroom. Hmm. That Victoria in the story is you. Yet, your prince never divorced you. I haven't spent only one month with him. But as for your wife, your wife was even generous enough she spent 11 months with you, but you refused to forgive her. She was even pleading and begging day and night for your forgiveness, but you refused. On the other hand, your prince is rich in mercy, and his long suffering is from everlasting to everlasting. He that has here, let him hear what the Spirit says. From me. Hey. I've told you to stay away from So this is why you've been not been picking my calls, yes. huh? Look. Look at what? Do you see me? Look at I'm a different woman now. Look at me. I'm a different oh, woman. Oh! Yes. Because you have changed your appearance. Stay away. So you think that's gonna change anything? Stay away, from stay away from me. Stay away from me. You know what? Stay away I'm from not me. Gonna... And don't come back. Don't come back. Look, I'm a changed woman now. I'm a child of God. I'm a different person now. I'm a different woman now. I'm a changed woman now. I live by the word of God. Okay? And I'm married. But you know I love you. Stay away from me. Do you want me to miss all this? Get out of my house. I love you. Get out of my house. I said I'm a changed woman. I've always taken care of you. Not anymore. I don't need you. Get out of my house. Leave. And don't come back. Okay. Get out. Get out. But you know I love you. I've always taken care of you. I said get out of my house. You know I love you. Mm -hmm. 